because most people focus on the delay processes. Phasing, EQ, flanging, reverbs, delays, listed from shortest to longest. EQs are microseconds, flangers are milliseconds, reverbs are a combination of milliseconds at different lengths. Delays can sometimes go up to a second. Let's try to explain what some of these things sound like. EQ, everybody kind of knows. It's like in your car, you can change the volume of different frequencies. Phasing, on the other hand, is something that people don't always understand, but the perfect example of what phasing is, is a jet plane taking off or a car whizzing by you. That's actually a phasing effect that happens because of a physical motion of the car being closer to you and then further away from you and then further away from you as it passes by. Coming towards you, getting closer, and then going past you and getting further. And so what happens is because of the speed of sound, when it's closer, it hits you sooner. When it's further away, it hits you later. So you get this phasing effect that sweeps up in frequency. It is a Doppler effect. A Leslie cabinet on an organ, it's a spinning speaker. And because it's spinning, it creates that same effect, this kind of phasing effect. What phasing does is it creates a notch in the spectrum. So if you've got a delay, your signal's coming input here, output here, and you've got this delay time that's changing, getting longer and shorter, and you've got a non-delayed path that you can control the blend of. Now you've got a phasing effect where you've created a notch filter that actually sweeps in time as the delay time gets longer and shorter. So this notch filter goes It's very useful. I mean, everyone from the Beatles to Pink Floyd used it. Uh, phasing is one notch moving along. What flanging is, is when you've got multiple delays doing the same sort of thing, in multiple feedback loops, you get what's called a comb filter here, where there's more notches that sweep back and forth. It's a much more severe version of what phasing sounds like. Flanging, if you want to hear the typical flanger sound of a guitar, listen to Eddie Van Halen. Van Halen used to use flange on their guitar because it was a new sound at the time and everybody had to have it. But what flanging does is basically, it's called flanging because in the early days of recording arts, they used to use a tape machine to create flanging effect. So what they'd do is they'd take the signal that was not delayed, and they'd also send it to a tape machine and bring it back and blend it together with the non-delayed signal. And then an engineer would take his thumb and put it on the reel and then letting up on the reel. So basically it would change the speed of the tape. So the delay would change constantly and it would be blended back in with the non-delayed signals. And what they used to do is, he said they used to tape, take duct tape and tape a brick onto the reel and then tip the machine on edge so every time it went down, gravity would make it speed up and slow down with the extra weight of the, of the, the reel being heavier on one side than the other. They created a lot of very classic ways of creating phasing using a delay using a tape machine. And let's talk about a reverb for a second, because we didn't really talk about how that works so well. I sort of breezed over it, and I think it's worth talking about, because everybody likes to sing in the shower. Why do they like to sing in the shower? Because you get reverb in the shower with all of the reflections off the tile walls. Let's say you're in the shower. Here's the shower head, and here's you, and you're sitting there singing, and you're, you're singing away, right? So the sound comes off, you're, you know, you're, you're singing, it hits this wall, it bounces here, bounces here, bounces here, bounces there, bounces here. And your ears pick up these delays, all of these multiple, multiple facets of delays, and they're all arriving to your ear at different times. So when you sing a note, you hear this delay that just sort of decays in time as the signal starts losing its energy from bouncing around in the room. Naturally, a tile room, the reverb will last longer if the room was wood. Or if the room had padding up on the wall, you get very little delay reflections. So it's based upon the fact that you've got different paths that the sound reflects off of, and each path is a different length, and being a different length, because sound takes time to travel, they all arrive at different times and create this phase upon phase upon phase upon phase kind of effect 
that becomes what we call reverb. They call it RT60 time. From its peak volume to down 60 dB, that's 60 decibels down. Once it's 60 decibels down, it's almost gone. And that's called the RT60 time. How much time does it take for it to get to that level? As I was mentioning, the modulation of delays with phasing and flanging, uh, the modulation is basically of the length of the delay that causes the sweeping sound. It can either be a sine wave sweep, it can be a triangle wave sweep, it can be different kinds of sweeps. Here's a delay in the simplest format. shows you that you've got a delayed signal with a non-delayed signal, and you can also give a feedback loop in the signal, which is really the regeneration. The more feedback that you give to the delay, the more repeats you'll have on, on the delay. And actually, when I set up my delay, uh, when I'm mixing, I'll set up my delay times so that they're a quarter note and an eighth note, or a, uh, a half note and a quarter note of the tempo of the song. So that if I'm using a delay on a vocal, just to give it more dimension, it's in time. And it doesn't feel awkward, like the first repeat's a little ahead of the beat and feels funny. So I set it up in time. And most of your plugins will automatically, if you tell it what tempo, it will automatically calculate the times. Multi-tap delays. This is multiple points you get feedback loops at different lengths of delays. This kind of delay can be used for multiple notch filters like flanging. It can be used to give you, uh, and, and actually a reverb is, it can be very similar to a multi-tap delay line because that is what reverb is. It's different delays just over and over and over regenerating. Ping pong delay. So it ping pongs left and right, left and right. This is a useful effect. Here's the flanger. Uh, 1 to 10 milliseconds. The delay has changed slightly over time with an LFO, which stands for low frequency oscillator, which can be a sine wave or a triangle wave or however you want to modulate the delay. And this gives that sweeping effect. Chorusing is another time delay effect. Chorusing is similar to a flanger, except the longer delay times of 20 to 30 milliseconds and the modulations around 3 hertz in terms of its delay modulation. They were trying to create something that would give you an automatic doubling effect on, on a voice when they came up with chorusing, but in reality it just sort of widens the sound. It makes it sound very good on certain elements. And because of the modulation and the delay, sometimes it, it slightly bends the pitch a little bit. And if you use too much chorusing, it'll feel that way. I use chorusing on fretless bass, especially if the guy isn't perfect in terms of his pitch. I use it sometimes on vocalists if they're not perfect with their pitch. I use it many times on clean guitars that are picking, arpeggiating, to give it sort of a glassy, sparkly feel. The typical sound of a chorused guitar is just pick up any 80s rock band with a clean guitar sound it'll probably be delayed in chorus. We used to use chorus all the time on guitars. Then when grunge came in, chorusing was out. Chorus guitars are like the big power guitars of the 80s. They were all chorus. Where grunge guitars of the 90s were just not chorus at all. and No reverbs on them at all either. Phase shifters. I'm just running through all of your possibilities of what you can do effect-wise. And this is how they're created. And it's really interesting. You can you know, anything you can think of, you can create with delays, with EQs, with compressors. I mean, combining dynamic control processing with time delay processing gets really interesting. So if you put a gate on a reverb, so when the reverb starts tailing off, the gate closes, you get this kind of sound. Sort of a John Bonham drum sound is a small room that kind of does that. It kind of goes and breathes when he hits the drums put a gate on a reverb, and it's a non-linear, unnatural kind of sound on the reverb that wouldn't be like that naturally, but it gives a lot of aggressiveness to the sound. I'm sort of pointing these things out so that you can sort of let your imagination go and do whatever you really feel is going to be fun and sound cool, and you can come up with stuff that no one's ever come up with. You can get all sorts of really cool sounds just by playing around with using different types of processors in tandem. And when we're talking about flanging, you're talking about a notch filter sweeping. Well, you could set up an EQ with a notch filter, and you could program in a sweep, and you get the same effect. But the interesting thing is you could use two 
EQs, set up two notch filters, and have them, instead of sweeping together, they could sweep in opposite directions, because you could program it that way. Come up with something that's totally different and totally never been done before. Very hard sometimes to come up with something unique, but now with computers, you can experiment to your heart's content to come up with something that's totally never been heard before.